Disney Princess Film History, Princess Aurora. In this video, we'll be exploring one of the most visually stunning of the Disney Princess films. Premiering in 1959, it is deemed to have the most expensive and beautiful art in any Disney film. Nothing like it had been attempted before, or ever since. Like Snow White and Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty is one of the most widely known fairy tales and has evolved from much older stories. There are four tales of Sleeping Beauty which have elements that we know of in the modern retellings. One of the earliest recorded versions is from the 1300s, or for unknown. Instead of three fairies, three goddesses appear in celebration of the birth of a baby girl named Zelandine. One of the goddesses is dismayed when she doesn't get as fine cutlery as the other two and curses the infant girl into an enchanted sleep when she will stab her finger on a piece of flax. The Disney film version is based on the Charles Perrault version from 1697. In this version, the three good fairies give the princess gifts of beauty, grace, good temper, dancing and music. Again, the princess is cursed to death on pricking her finger on a spinning wheel, but the third good fairy reviews this curse into a 100 year sleep. Be warned, in most versions, Sleeping Beauty is usually visited by a prince or king while she is still sleeping, and consequently, the sleeping princess would give birth to a child, nine months later, still asleep. Although in the Perot version, which doesn't include unconsented intimacy, he shows that love grows over time, and it is best to wait for the right person and teaches the reader that if you do so, then the relationship will be better. In 1890, the timeless tale of the Sleeping Beauty was transformed into one of the world's most beloved and captivating ballets, featuring incredible music by Tchaikovsky. The Disney Animation Studios started developing the story in 1951, but due to the painstaking animation process used for the film, it was not released until 1959. Walt Disney was also busy focusing on building the first Disneyland theme park and filming his TV show. It was even suggested that Disney should quit animation altogether to focus on these new plans. However, Disney persevered with his animated films, as it was from the profits of Cinderella that he was able to diversify his company at all. The animation studio had made some worthy hits in the 50s, including Alice in Wonderland, Peter Pan and Lady and the Tramp, but they were not making a lot of money from these films, so Disney did what they did best and went back to their roots of fairy tales. A heroine was what they needed. This time though, they would focus more on the main characters of the story instead of relying on the gimmicks of animal sidekicks and gags. The design of the film is what set it apart from the others. Walt wanted to make it visually different to Snow White and Cinderella as the stories were very similar. It was a bold design, modern and fresh. Medieval tapestries were the inspiration. I find Earl's bold graphic approach to Sleeping Beauty was at least partially inspired by Mary Blair's illustrations on previous Disney films. Gothic but contemporary, the motifs were from a 1950s point of view. The background style was long and vertical, and the characters were stylized in a way to match the background. The animators complained to Walt that this would restrict the look of the characters, but Walt didn't back down, he wanted visuals to stick out, but the animators won on the style of the fairies, which were a classic Disney look. Because of the artistic depth of Earl's backgrounds, it was decided for the characters to be stylized so they could appropriately match the backgrounds, and an innovation of a 70mm horizontal frame meant the animators had to use large paper, which was difficult to use. The ink and paint artists used clear cellulite, giving lavish attention, but costs were skyrocketing, almost bankrupting the company, and they never used it again. Walt meticulously chose the cast for Sleeping Beauty and chose Mary Costa in the role of Aurora. Costa is an American actress and operatic soprano. Disney wanted a dignified voice for Princess Aurora, and after she auditioned for the role, he called her personally to offer her the part though she would have to get rid of her Southern American accent and replace it with a British one. Another way that Disney wanted to make the film stand out was the use of Tchaikovsky's music from the ballet score. Several Tchaikovsky scores can be heard in the film, including the song Once Upon a Dream. After almost a decade, the film premiered in Los Angeles on January 29th, 1959 and grossed approximately $5.3 million. 
Sleeping Beauty's production costs totaled $6 million, the most expensive Disney film up to that point. The high production costs of Sleeping Beauty resulted in the company posting its first annual loss in a decade, and there were massive layoffs throughout the animation department. Sleeping Beauty is thought to be set in France in the late 14th century, so with this comes a medieval approach to Aurora's clothing, with influences of the 50s fashion scene. If we start with her peasant dress, you'll notice that she wears a lace-up bodice over a beige blouse. This bodice and blouse are typical of medieval slash renaissance clothing. The collar could be homage to the 1950s popular Peter Pan style collar and was typical of 50s women's fashion. Next, Aurora wears a full below knee length light brown skirt. Check out any late 1950s skirt and you'll see the exact same silhouette and length. Aurora's birthday gown has got a fitted bodice with multiple seams, a fitted V waist and full but A-lined skirt. The sleeves are long and pointed. This could be referencing 15th century Burgundian, a mid 1400s fashion led by the Duchy of Burgundy. Her dress could also be influenced by the Petal Ball Gown, a variant on a dress first made for Millicent Rogers in 1949. In general, Aurora's hair is all 1950s. Women in medieval times generally never left their hair loose and free flowing. Sleeping Beauty was the second most successful film of 1959 after Ben Hur. It is considered a visual masterpiece by many critics and fans alike. To help promote the film, the Imagineers designed the Disneyland castle in the style of Sleeping Beauty, even though the park opened four years before the film's release. The castles in Disneyland Paris and Hong Kong are also Sleeping Beauties. Aurora's ball gown switches from pink to blue throughout the film, during a time when the stereotypical colours associated with the gender of a baby were beginning to change. Before this time, blue was generally considered a girl's colour and pink a boy's. Princess Aurora has only about 18 lines of actual dialogue throughout the entire film, in which she only appears for 18 minutes. The prince is named after Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh and husband of Queen Elizabeth II. In conclusion, Aurora is very similar to the likes of Snow White and Cinderella in terms of their passive heroine status. Yet Aurora was part of a film that was unique and an artful differentiation to the following Disney films that would later be released. Sleeping Beauty was the last fairy tale film that Walt Disney worked on when he was alive and there wouldn't be another of its kind for another 30 years. Walt Disney died in 1966 from lung cancer complications and the animation department struggled to keep Walt's vision alive. Soon after, the studio would enter what fans generally call the dark ages of animation. In the following video of this series, we'll be diving into The Little Mermaid and Princess Ariel, resurfacing from the dark ages and into a Disney animation renaissance. Is Aurora your favourite Disney princess? Was there anything new that you learned about her film? If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment your thoughts and check out what other Disney projects I have on my channel. Thank you for watching.